the last class we have discussed about negative feedback in a circuit using op amp. Now, in that case the output voltage which was fed back to the input via a feedback circuit was it added negatively or it was subtracted. But today let us discuss about a positive feedback. Here the signal from the output is fed to the input and is added to the input signal. So, this circuit here or the block diagram here is about a positive feedback where the input signal is access or the supply signal and the output signal x naught is obtained after amplification and that amplifier gain is say A which is giving the gain between the output signal and the input signal x naught versus y x i is A and the output signal x naught is fed to the input by a block or a network whose gain is beta. So, here the feedback signal coming from this beta after passing through beta is added with the supply signal x s and so the signal before the amplifier becomes x s plus x f x s being the supply signal and x f being the feedback signal. So, if we analyze this block diagram representation we get that the output signal x naught is a times of the input signal x i that input being the input before this block a and x i is nothing but x s plus x f and so we can write it as x naught equal to a into x s plus x f is nothing but x s plus beta times of x naught because if we consider this block it is having an input coming from the output signal x naught and its output is x f and that x f is nothing but beta times of x naught. Now, simplifying this expression if we now take this x naught equal to a x s plus beta times of x naught we get finally, that x naught is equal to a times x s plus beta into a into x naught where I am just opening this bracket bracketed form of expression. So, now we are simplifying by taking x naught common and that becomes 1 minus a times beta into x naught equal to a x s. And so, finally, we get the gain of the whole circuit or whole amplifier as x naught by x s the output divided by the supplied signal x s and that is obtained as a by 1 minus a beta. So, this expression of a by 1 minus a beta giving the gain of this feedback amplifier having positive feedback. So, here a f is denoting the gain of the whole feedback amplifier. Now, if we consider this gain and see the expression a beta in the denominator, if we can make a beta equal to 1, then the denominator expression becomes 0. So, this gain a f becomes infinity. Meaning is that the gain a f infinity means that x naught by x s is infinity and if we consider a finite output then it is obvious that the source signal has to be 0 because only then this infinite gain can be realized which is x naught by x s if a beta becomes 1 then the gain becomes infinity meaning that x naught x s is infinity. Now, x naught 
is a finite gain a uh, finite output signal if we consider the output signal to be finite then it has to be that the the supply signal xs will be zero now this meaning is that even if the xs signal is zero then even then there exists a finite output signal x not meaning is that we will be getting an output signal even though there is an zero source or even if there is no input signal we are getting an output signal when this condition a b equal to 1 is met so this has a very important implication that we are going to get an output signal even in the absence of an input signal means we are going to generate an output signal which is the basis of waveform generators so if we look into the the block diagram again here in this block diagram which we have now taken x not the output signal is equal to a times of x i and this feedback signal x f is equal to beta times of x naught. Now, if we consider the feedback signal x f, we can write it as beta times of x naught and x naught is nothing but a times of x i. So, I get x f is equal to a b into x i meaning that we are getting the feedback signal which is a b times a beta times the input signal x i input signal x i at this point which is before the amplifier a now if a b is made one then we get that the feedback signal equal to the input signal and now if we switch the input terminal to xf or the feedback signal then what happens here if we make this switch consider it like a switch and we are making this switch xi closing it to xf that means this side is closed now then xf and xi are equal means this block which is now a closed loop it will be giving the output signal x naught and the signal which is xi is equal to the feedback signal means same feedback signal that we are getting from the output is fed as input to the amplifier so the output signal will continue to be sustained at the earlier value because the input signal is same as the feedback signal whatever the feedback signal we are getting from the output the same feedback signal is given as input to the block a and that block is outputting the output signal x naught which is a times of x i or a times of x f so if we now are making that a beta is equal to 1 then same feedback signal as input is coming and we are getting a sustained oscillations or we are getting the output sustained at the previous value it will be continuing to be the same output signal and that is the basis of the generation of sustained output signal even in the presence of an input source or an input supply signal. So, the basis of this waveform generation is that we have to make the loop gain a beta equal to 1. So, this a beta equal to 1 means the product of the amplifier gain and the gain of the feedback network which we are going to use that product should be giving a value of 1 in this positive 
feedback amplifier. So, now the circuit which is generating this oscillations even in the absence of an input signal is generally known as oscillator or waveform generator and this circuit will be producing a repetitive waveform of fixed amplitude and frequency without any external input signal. That means, we will be getting at the output a sustained oscillation of fixed gain or fixed amplitude and frequency even though there is no source at the input. And this oscillator is used in many devices like in radio, TV, computers and communications wherever we require such generation of a signal then we have to use this oscillator and there are various types of oscillators depending upon the components being used. They can be classified as RC oscillator, LC oscillator, crystal oscillators etcetera. RC oscillator as the name is suggesting it is using R and C components resistance and capacitance and this RC capacitor RC oscillator is generally producing waveform at audio frequency that is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency range is the range of frequency that can be obtained in the waveforms and it will be generating sinusoidal waveform RC oscillator using this RC component along with an amplifier. There will be two components, so basic components, one amplifier and the other is the feedback network and in that feedback network if R and C components are used, we will be getting RC oscillator which is the oscillator that gives the sinusoidal loss sinusoidal waveforms at audio frequency and there are other os oscillators like LC oscillator where inductance and capacitance are used as well as crystal oscillators, their crystals are used and generally these two types of oscillators that are LC and crystal oscillators are used for generating waveforms at radio frequency, it is a very high frequency waveform generation can be possible using LCN crystal oscillator and there may be different shapes are that are possible using this LC and crystal oscillators which may be triangular, square or wave sorted waveforms etcetera. Now, we will be discussing RC oscillators which are used for obtaining waveforms at audio frequencies. So, the basic principle of oscillator as we have now got that the loop gain must be made to be equal to 1 and the, may the circuit of the, base of the basic oscillator consists of an amplifier as well as a feedback network which is the frequency selective network and this frequency selective network is connected in the feedback loop. And here one important thing is that that to be remembered is that the feedback which is obtained the feedback signal will be added positively that means, the, the feedback is positive the feedback signal will be added to the input signal in a positive way. And as there is a frequency selective network, this frequency selective network will be using components which are not purely resistive that means, we will be having reactive components in the feedback network. So, the feedback network which is used for frequency selecting is a network which will be using components like resistance capacitance which are not only resistive, but has reactive parts also, react 
reactive components are also there like capacitance in the feedback network. So, we again revisit the block diagram from representation of the oscillator. The main components as we have now noted is that one is the amplifier and generally we will be using op amp in here we will be discussing oscillator using op amp and apart from op amp which is the amplifier having a gain say a this is the block of this op amp that is the amplifier we will be having in the feedback loop one frequency selective network which is denoted by this gain beta. So, in this loop the output voltage is V naught and this voltage is fed back to the input by this feedback network having the gain beta. So, the feedback signal which is obtained at this point after passing through this beta is V f and that V f is added positively to the input. So, the input signal which is obtained and passes through the gain A is V s plus V f that is the supply signal V s and V f. So, we are this we are now discussing a block diagram representation which where we are showing a signal V s just for easy analysis, but mind it that in this oscillator even in the presence absence of a signal we will be getting the output waveform, but here we are considering a block diagram having a signal V s for realizing the condition. Now, the voltage gain if we consider the voltage gain of the oscillator V naught by V s it is given by A f and we are using a bracketed form j omega that is A f of j omega we are writing because this voltage gain of the oscillator will be dependent on the components which will be having reactive components also. So, it will be written in frequency domain that is why it is written as j omega, j omega is nothing but the quantity s. So, it denotes that it is a frequency domain quantity. So, we are writing a f s basically a f s is nothing but j omega, omega being the frequency. And now, the principle of oscillation as we have already found that it should be such that the overall loop gain a beta must be equal to 1. Then even in the absence of a source or a supply, we will be able to get output waveform being generated. And so, for sustained oscillations at a frequency say f naught, that condition of a beta must be equal to 1. Then at that frequency f naught where this condition is being met, the output waveform the sinusoidal waveform will be generated. So, basically we have to find out that condition and from that condition we will be arriving at the frequency of generation of the waveform. So, that is what we are going to derive today that is given an oscillator circuit which will be generating the output sinusoidal waveform using RC feedback components. We will be trying to obtain that frequency of oscillation from our condition that the loop gain a beta must be equal to 1 then only we will be getting the sustained oscillations at that frequency. Now, one point may be coming to your mind is that without the presence of any input signal, how can we generate an output waveform? Basically, the starting point of generation 
is a very small voltage which is generated from noise. Because of the presence of the components like resistors and conductors, there will be random movement of electrons which will be contributing to generation of an electrical noise. Although very small in magnitude at a frequency omega naught say that will be the starting point of generation and after it is initialized in the loop it will be continuing as a regenerative effect and the oscillations will be sustained by feeding back in that loop and continuing in that loop. But there is a starting point of course and that starting point is initialized from random obtained electrical noise. And if we consider the power because something can be obtained at the expense of something only because we are not able to generate energy we only we are converting from one form to the other. So, what we are spending here is the DC power because the amplifier circuit whatever we are using it is driven by a DC source. So, at the expense of the DC power only we are able to get the AC power that means the electrical power that will be obtained for this waveform which is being generated that power it will be deriving from the DC power which is supply only it will be conversion from one form to the other. Now, if we <coughs> consider the loop gain L j omega which is a j omega into beta j omega and as it is frequency domain term. So, as we know there will be two components one will be the real part and one will be the imaginary part which contributes to two physical parameters that is the magnitude of the gain and phase angle. So, the quantity L j omega or the loop gain A j omega beta j omega has one magnitude term and an L and an phase term or angle term and that is denoted by these two quantities which is the magnitude quantity is given by the magnitude symbol and the phase quantity is or the angle quantity is given by this angle expression. So, for satisfying the condition that a beta equal to 1 L j omega is a beta a j omega b j omega. So, as it has two components one is the magnitude L j omega and one is the angle L j omega. That means, magnitude of this A j omega B j omega and angle of this A j omega B j omega. So, if this condition is to be met as it is an complex quantity having real and imaginary part or magnitude and angle part. So, equalizing to 1 means equalizing to 1 plus j 0 basically 1 is nothing but 1 plus j 0 which contributes a magnitude term of 1 and the angle if we consider the angle is 0 tan inverse of 0 that is imaginary by real part 0 by 1 is 0. So, tan inverse of 0 is 0 or integral multiples of 2 pi because 0 2 pi then all other integral multiples that will be having the same angle or same uh, phase part that means we will be having to satisfy these two conditions that magnitude is 1 and f and the angle is 0 or integral multiples of 2 pi because we know that if we consider this polar coordinates 0 we will be having tan 0 and again 2 pi 4 pi like that. So, this condition is known as Barkhausen criteria. This criteria that magnitude must be equal to 1 and phase must be or angle must be equal to 0 or integral multiples of 2 pi that is given or this criteria is given by Barkhausen and that is known as Barkhausen criteria. So, now let us consider a practical oscillator circuit using op amp and the frequency selective network or beta network as it is called and we are going to discuss about only RC oscillator 
that is using the components resistive and capacitance in the feedback network and using an op amp as the active device <coughs> and as we know that this oscillator will be producing or generating sinusoidal oscillations at radio at audio frequency. So, one example of this RC oscillator is wine bridge oscillator. So, the circuit diagram for wine bridge oscillator is shown here. Here this is the op amp which is having again say A and here as the connection of this op amp is showing it is a it is an amplifier which is a non-inverting amplifier because the negative terminal if you see that resistive network is connected which is composed of R1 and R2 and at the positive terminal we are getting a feedback voltage which is coming from the output V0 by the network having these components R and C here and here. So, in this circuit we are having the two basic things as are required one is the op amp and the other is the feedback network and the op amp is connected in the way of a non-inverting amplifier. So, now if we see only this op amp part that means the non-inverting amplifier part here let us consider the voltage here which is coming from the output via this feedback network as Vf that Vf is the input voltage to this op amp because at this point this voltage available is Vf which is the feedback voltage from V0 and that is the input voltage given to this non-inverting op amp at the positive terminal and the feedback is added positively to the op amp as you can see that this positive terminal is having this voltage Vf. So, it is a positive feedback example and if we consider only this dashed part which is a non-inverting op amp it is having a gain ASA which is V0 by Vi and it is as we know already non-inverting op amp has a gain of 1 plus the feedback resistance Rf by R1 and here we are using the feedback resistance R2 and so the gain will be 1 plus R2 by R1 that is the gain of the of the non-inverting amplifier part. Now, if we redraw the circuit and try to understand it how the feedback is being obtained and how it is being added up to the input let us redraw it again and we are showing the op amp having the non-inverting connection and the feedback network separately by this dashed block. <coughs> so, here the non-inverting op amp is this portion where the output voltage obtained is V0, input voltage is Vi and this is the R1 and R2 are the resistances which are connected to this op amp. The Vi is actually coming from the feedback voltage and that feedback voltage is obtained by this feedback network which is obtained using R and C components and the R and C components are arranged in this fashion. This same network which we discussed here we are just drawing it separately again for easy understanding. So, if we consider this point and see the connection that is the feedback voltage V f is obtained at this point which is the input to this non-inverting op amp and the R and C this R and C is in resist in in series and this R and C are in parallel. So, the point of connection is here and that is here this R and C are in parallel and this R and C are in series. So, this voltage V naught this point this point is ground this point is ground. So, this voltage V naught is the voltage which is fed back by this whole network of feedback and added positively to the op amp. So, now we can find out what will be the feedback voltage because as we have this resistance and capacitance network which can be simplified to obtain 
the voltage feedback Bf in terms of the output voltage V0. So, let us going let us go to do that. So, we will be finding out what will be the feedback voltage. So, let us draw this feedback network alone having the resistance capacitance and this network is having the resistance R and C which are in series and this R and C are in parallel. So, we are just naming the series uh, resistance and capacitance as having impedance ZS series resistance series impedance ZS and the two parallel ones that means resistance R and capacitance C which are in parallel they are contributing to a an impedance ZP. So, this is the feedback network alone output volt what the the voltage which we uh, we are having as input to this feedback network is V naught and it is outputting the voltage V f. So, this is input this is output basically for this feedback network. So, now what will be the output voltage if we consider input as V naught what will be the output V f? This is very simple because the voltage division is taking place and the voltage V naught is divided into two components as per voltage division. So, the voltage which is available across this parallel impedance that is of our interest which is V f. So, what is V f? Z naught into Z p V naught into Z p divided by Z p plus Z s and Z p by Z p plus Z s that is the beta or the gain of the feedback network because beta is nothing but V f by V naught output V f by V naught is the gain of the feedback circuit and that is denoted by beta and if we find out from this voltage division V f by V naught is equal to Z p by Z p plus Z s. So, now we are writing Z p and Z s in terms of the resistance and capacitances. What is Z p? This parallel impedance between R and C is equal to R into 1 by J omega C by R plus 1 by J omega C because these two are in parallel. So, R into 1 by J omega C by R plus J omega C is Z p. Similarly, we can get what is the series impedance between R and C as they are in series it is simply R plus 1 by J omega. So, we can now simplify the beta which is equal to Z p by Z p plus Z s. So, replacing the term Z p and Z s here we get Z p equal to R into 1 by J omega C by R plus 1 by J omega C and Z p plus Z s in the denominator. So, Z s is R plus 1 by J omega C. So, this is the whole expression for beta. Now, to simplify this expression we just multiply both numerator and denominator by the term R into 1 by J omega C by R plus 1 by J omega C inverse. That is we want to get rid of this term. So, I am going to multiply it by the reciprocal of this term. So, the numerator will be 1 and this part will be 1 plus this part has to be multiplied by R plus 1 by J omega C divided by R into 1 by J omega C. So, the whole expression will be 1 by 1 plus this will be squared and divided by R by J omega C. So, we have to now concentrate on this expression. We want to basically find out that frequency at which the condition 
of Barkhausen criteria will be met. So, for that basically what we want is that a beta should be equal to 1. Now, this expression if we further simplify this expression can be further simplified because we can now just expand this term that will be equal to 1 by 1 plus this denominator denominator has this part square. So, it will be r square plus 1 by j square omega square c square plus 2 r by j omega c divided by r by j omega c. So, if we again multiply the numerator and denominator of this lower term, this term by j omega c by r, then we get beta equal to 1 by 1 plus this term will be r square plus 1 by j square omega square c square plus twice r by j omega c into j omega c by r. So, we get finally 1 plus if we multiply this it will be j omega r c plus this 1 by j omega square means minus 1 or we can we can cancel one term here. So, it will be 1 by j omega r c plus this r this r goes. So, 2 by j omega c. So, that can be further written as taking this j common we can write finally j can be taken to be common and it will be omega r c plus 1 if I multiply by j that is if we take common this j then 1 omega r c or even if we rationalize the lower term then we can get finally that beta term will be equal to 1 by 3 plus j into omega r c minus 1 by omega r c. This you can obtain by simplifying this expression for beta. So, if we now see the expression for beta and we want to achieve that a beta equal to 1 or the loop gain should be equal to 1. So, what is a into beta that I will be substituting a is the gain of the non inverting amplifier and 1 by 1 plus r 2 by r 1 that is the gain of this non inverting amplifier a. So, 1 plus r 2 by r 1 into this term. So, this is the loop gain. So, now if we have to satisfy the Barkhausen criteria, then our criteria is that we have to get the angle as 0 and we have to get the magnitude as 1. So, at a particular frequency, that frequency we have to obtain. So, first of all, applying this criteria that we have to get angle to be equal to 0. So, if we look into this expression, this angle is what? This angle, if we find out the, the numerator term has tan inverse, the, this, this term has a 0 angle and the denominator term has an angle of tan inverse of, if we consider this angle, here what is this angle? It is basically 1 plus r 2 by r 1 this is the real part and the imaginary part is 0 and here it is 3 plus j omega r c plus 1 by minus 1 by omega r c. So, if the angle has to be made 0 then this part has to be 0 because 
then only we will be getting overall zero angle because the numerator has already zero angle tan inverse of zero by this is zero and the denominator has an angle of tan inverse of this part divided by 3, but that will be made that will be value will be 0 only when this whole imaginary part component has a 0 value. So, that means the criteria which is to be satisfied is that this part will be having will have to have a 0 value. So, that overall angle becomes 0. So, putting that condition that at that frequency where it will be met let us name that frequency as omega naught. So, at that frequency omega naught the imaginary part must be equal to 0 in order to contribute to a 0 angle to meet the Barkhausen criteria. So, we are now to get that condition if that term has to be made 0 that means, if this has to be made 0 then omega r c must be equal to 1 by omega r c. So, at a particular frequency omega naught we must have this condition that omega naught r c equal to 1 by omega naught r c and that gives the frequency of oscillation as omega naught can be found out omega naught square r square c square equal to 1 this is the condition. So, from that we can find out what is the frequency of oscillation. So, the frequency of oscillation omega naught square equal to 1 by r square c square. So, omega naught equal to 1 by r c. So, if we consider the frequency only not in angular frequency, so frequency is in hertz or kilohertz, we have to divide it by 2 pi. So, 1 by 2 pi r c that is the frequency of oscillation at which the condition is made. So, we have to get this condition at this frequency and if this frequency is giving that condition then we have to meet the magnitude criteria also at that frequency. So, what is the magnitude of this loop gain if we consider the magnitude now for this frequency because this part is 0 at this frequency f naught. So, the magnitude will be simply 1 plus r 2 by r 1 divided by 3. So, this is the loop gain magnitude. So, loop gain magnitude L j omega is equal to 1 plus r 2 by r 1 by 3. Now, we know that this has to become 1 in order to give sustain oscillations. So, keeping that condition in mind, now let us make this whole magnitude term equal to 1. That means, 1 plus r 2 by r 1 must be equal to 3. If this has to be made 1, then 1 plus r 2 by r 1 is equal to 3. So, what we get now finally, r 2 by r 1 is equal to 3 minus 1, 3 r 2 by r 1 is equal to 2. So, if we have to get sustained oscillations at a frequency using that Weinberg oscillator, then the op m which we are going to use in the non inverting configuration must be having the resistance ratio such that r 2 by r 1 must be equal to 2. So, we can take r 2 is equal to 2 times of r 1. So, that will be the criterion which has to be met in order to get the sustained sinusoidal oscillations using Weinberg oscillator. Now, if we consider another type of oscillator say phase shift oscillator is another type of R c oscillator. Here the name phase shift is given because the criteria which is satisfied here is that we have to obtain 360 degree should be the angle of the loop gain a b must be having an angle of 0 or integral multiples of 2 pi. So, here what is taken as the angle as 2 pi 360 degree or 0 means the similar thing. So, here what is the principle of 
operation or principle which is followed in this phase shift oscillator is that 180 degree phase shift is obtained by the amplifier and then another 180 degree phase shift is obtained by the feedback network. So, overall phase shift or overall angle will be 360 degree for the whole oscillator. And if configuration of this phase shift oscillator is the use of RNC only as it is an RC oscillator and here the op amp which is used is having an inverting type of configuration. This is the difference from the earlier one. So, here is the inverting configuration. So, this is having the voltage here at the negative terminal and this voltage is the feedback voltage which is obtained from the feedback network having this gain beta. And here the configuration of this feedback network is similar configuration give using RNC as shown here and this oscillator circuit will be oscillating or will be will be causing oscillations at a frequency f naught say at which the feedback network has a phase shift of 180 degree and the inverting op amp is already having 180 degree phase shift. So, total phase shift is to 60 degree or 0 degree that is the principle which is followed here. So, now we can easily show that the frequency at which we will be obtaining the 180 degree phase shift is f naught say and that f naught is 1 by 2 pi root over 6 into R c. This can be obtained by considering this circuit and finding out the feedback network gain B f by V naught that is equal to beta. So, for finding out the value of beta we will have to consider this feedback circuit alone and we can use Kirchhoff's current law because here as you can see that at these junctures or nodes we have different voltages available because this is the input to coming to this feedback network and this voltage here this voltage here and this voltage here if we go on finding out by using Kirchhoff's current law or the node equations we can show that finally the value of beta with whatever we will be obtaining that feedback network gain beta will be having 180 degree phase shift and already we know that the inverting op amp configuration that is being used here is <coughs> having already 180 degree phase shift because the output voltage is having a negative sign minus r f by r 1 is the gain of the non invert uh, inverting op amp here it is inverting op amp is used. So, the overall oscillator will be having a 360 degree phase shift <coughs> and that frequency at which we obtain this 180 degree phase shift for the feedback network can be shown to be equal to 1 by 2 pi root 6 into r into c <coughs> and at this frequency the gain of the op amp can be shown to have a value of 29 that is r f by r 1 magnitude if we consider because already phase will be 180 degree that means it will be having a negative sign, but if we consider the gain only that gain will be 29. So, in this phase shift network we also get the, the sinusoidal uh, oscillations or sustained oscillations <coughs> and the 
frequency of oscillation is only audio fre frequency that is we get 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency of oscillation in this type of oscillator using RC network. If we want to get very high frequency oscillations at the output then we have to go for LC or crystal oscillators because crystals will have to use for getting the radio frequency oscillations. In this type of oscillators which we are discussing till now that is RC type of oscillators can only generate the audio frequency oscillations and the main principle as we have seen here is that it is a positive feedback oscillator where we add the output voltage by a feedback network to the input where the output voltage is added positively to the input and it is regenerative in nature that is why we are able to get the output even if we do not have any source at the input. So, as I have mentioned that the starting point of oscillation will be noise voltage only, but once it is initialized with a very small noise voltage, it can go on regeneratively and it will be, it will be giving the output voltage at constant magnitude. Now, what is uh, assumed here is that we are making a b exactly equal to 1. That means, if the value of a b magnitude is less than 1 or greater than 1, we will be not able to achieve that sustained oscillations. Now, what will happen if we make or if we are not uh, getting exactly 1, but it is less than 1 suppose a beta is equal to say less than 1 we are getting then the oscillations will die out. It will be not sustained with constant amplitude, but it they will be dying out. But if a b is greater than 1, then the magnitude of the gain will be increasing and finally, it will be reaching saturation and we are to maintain that is why the value of a b 1. But this is one difficult situation to meet practically because of the deviations occurring in the resistance values etcetera or due to temperature or other effects. Even though we have designed it to give you the value of a b to equal to 1, but may not be maintained afterwards because of the environmental factors present that is temperatures etcetera may change the values of the resistances or other components that we have selected. So, basically it is a difficulty in maintaining that value of a beta equal to 1. So, it is not so simple circuit as we have shown here there has to be some compensations for the practical difficulties and that is why we have to go for other adaptive methods for maintaining the oscillations in a sustained manner and preventing them from dying out or even going into saturation. So, there are basically improving methods, but we are only discussing the basic oscillator circuit from the principle of operation that is the principle which we have to maintain, but practical circuits may be having other improving methods to maintain it at a constant sustained oscillation or constant magnitude oscillations at a particular frequency. So, the circuit which we discussed today is about generation of sinusoidal oscillations using 
a very important criteria called Barkhausen criteria and the basic principle is that we have feedback which is positive in nature. So, this is positive feedback mechanism which is finally giving the sustained oscillations and these oscillations or the sinusoidal waveforms which we have generated which we generate via this os type of oscillators are useful in various applications where you have to use audio frequency sinusoidal oscillations for example tv radio and many other circuits and there are other types of oscillators but we only have to remember the basic principle of Barkhausen criteria and then we can very easily solve the circuit to give us the required sinusoidal oscillations.